Please hang up and try again. Hi everyone. I thought I would sit down and just put together some thoughts that I've had recently, uh, especially after my travels. When I first thought about travelling, I thought about finding a destination, jumping on a plane, going there, coming back, and basically taking the easy way. Uh, but I've done that so many times, and that was the, it was the easy way out. One of the biggest reasons for taking the road trip was that I live alone in a very small condo and I rarely socialise with others and a lot of that to do is to do with my work schedule. I work away so often that I rarely attend events and then because I'm always declining events then the invites to events were getting less and less as well. I would find myself looking forward to going back to work just to be around people to talk to. So my world was getting smaller and smaller and I had to do something to break out of those walls. I've lived in Calgary for 16 years now and Calgary is just three hours from the Canada-US border and I realised I'd never driven across the border and I have never driven in the US alone. So going on this this road trip was a, a huge departure for me. One of the main things I learned was that I am okay on my own. Um, yeah, there were some scary times. There was times when I was on the road in Salt Lake City and there was just six or seven lanes going everywhere. Um, that, that panic or driving into Vegas and then somebody deciding they didn't like the, the Canada play and being on the other end of their road rage basically. Um, but it shook me, but I got through it. Um, a hard thing about traveling alone though is when you go and see something or do something, it's like you've got no one to share it with. So you get there, you see it, it's like, Okay, that's done. May as well head back now. Um, but that also meant that being on my own, I learned to make up my mind about what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. You're in Vegas, you think, I should go and see the Grand Canyon. I should go and do this. I should go and do that. And then you look at it and realize that it's a five-hour drive. So you're going to drive five hours, be there for a a couple of hours and have no, no one to share it with and then I have a five hour drive home again and it's like I don't really want to do that and I don't want to spend the huge amount of money that it would cost just to, to go out there with or, or, on a bus so I say screw it I'm going to sit next to the pool for the next couple of days listening to my audio books Think of it as taking a transatlantic flight. You're on an aeroplane for eight hours and you have to be awake and be aware that eight, that whole eight hours. You get off the plane, you have a sleep, you get back on the plane and you do it again. So that's what the road trip was like. When you've got no one to share the driving, that's all down to you. And that is bloody exhausting. So I basically... I just wanted to turn off. But there was also a reason why once I started on my home leg, I was eager to get home, which is very contradictory. I wanted to go away because I didn't want to be alone in the condo. And then once I was away, I wanted to come back. <laughs> so audiobooks and Netflix were my godsend while I was away and put me to sleep many a night. I was thinking about, I watched a video recently of uh, one of my good friends and he'd been talking about honesty and integrity and it made me look at how much I take people at face value. The face that they present to me, how they, how I, I can be so taken with what they say and not what they do and it made me realize that 
the people I have in my life now, my family and friends, they are honest, they are full of integrity, I like their moral codes, I, I align myself with these people, but it's made me think that I really am going to have to change the way I allow new people into my life. So being, being lied to and being led on has left me pretty hollow. That's also given me a lot of reluctance on my part going forward into the dating world again. Um, I know I'm okay on my own. I know that I don't need to date, but I would like a life companion. You know, even if it's just someone you share a house with and you come home to at the end of the day, but you have your own interests in your own life. And there's a lot of companionship relationships like that out there. And that is something that I want to find. But society at the moment puts so much judgment on the cover they see. I'm not ashamed of my body and I'm not ashamed of being seen naked and those who know me know that I have no trouble being seen naked. But I need to improve the cover that I'm in so that people will actually open the book and see what's inside. Now there's a couple of things that happened just before I went on vacation. Um, one of them was I was diagnosed with diabetes. The second one is that my doctor is referring me for bariatric surgery. So the second one should really help the first one. Now I know that bariatric surgery is not that magic tablet that's going to make everything go away. It is just a tool that I can use that will help me to be able to do what I haven't been able to do alone. It means that if I diet and exercise and follow their regime, the weight loss impact will be pretty extreme. The wait list is about one to two years and it is covered by the uh, provincial healthcare. So it's silly for me to be offered this tool and to not take it. So. I'm going to go down that path. I'm going to see where that, where that takes me. I know that I am not going to end up at like Kate Moss. I'm not going to have men lining up down the road. But I hope it's going to make me less invisible than I am now. So that's basically the update I have for you. I hope you enjoyed watching the videos and that you will continue uh, following the, the path as I move forward and if there's anything you want me to touch on, to explore more, please drop me a comment, drop me a message and we will see where we can take this. Thanks so much.